Coronavirus cases across the UK continue to be uncomfortably high and citing pressure on hospitals. The chief executive of the NHS Confederation has now called for the government to reintroduce modest restrictions to slow the virus's spread. There has also been pressure from a number of members of SAGE to implement the government's so-called COVID Plan B, which would see mandatory face masks and a request to work from home. Both come back into effect. This was the context for the first Downing Street press conference we've had in over a month. That happened this afternoon, but Health Secretary Sajid Javid was clear that he had no intention of reintroducing new restrictions, saying the NHS was not yet overwhelmed. In this clip, you'll also hear from Stephen Powis, who is the medical director of the NHS. We don't believe that the, the pressures that are currently faced by the NHS are unsustainable. Uh, don't get me wrong, there are huge pressures, especially in A&E, in primary care, uh, for example, as well. Uh, but uh, at this point, we don't believe they're unsustainable. And, and Steve can answer a bit more about that in a moment. But I will say one of the reasons uh, I think the, the NHS is, is able to do what it does still, um, of, number one is obviously thanks to everyone that's working in the NHS, but the extra support we're, we're providing uh, this year, for the second half of this year, we're providing an additional £5.4 billion, uh, which is, is certainly helping. And that's, and that's what we hear. And we will absolutely keep it under review. If we feel at any point it's becoming unsustainable, then the, the, the department, together with our friends at the NHS, we won't hesitate to act. Steve. Uh, yes, thank you, Sophie. So, so I think the first thing to acknowledge, as the Secretary of State has said, and indeed as our Chief Executive Amanda Pritchard said at the Health Select Committee yesterday, the NHS is under considerable pressure. We've had a very tough summer. Uh, as we have continued to treat people with COVID, uh, being admitted to hospitals, a society has opened up again and we've begun to see a return to normal, near normal levels of presentations of urgent and emergent, uh, people who need urgent and emergency care. Uh, and of course, as we started to make inroads uh, uh, into treatments for patients whose care has been disrupted and delayed during the pandemic. So, so it undoubtedly feels exceptionally busy uh, in the NHS and our NHS organisations are telling us that all the time. It's not just COVID, of course. Um, we uh, have one eye to the flu season uh, and we don't know what's going to happen with flu this year, but there is a risk that we will get more flu back and it will be worse than previous years because we missed out a season last year. And there are other viruses uh, around as yet uh, as well. Uh, around, uh, as well. Uh, and of course, we are continuing to do all that work around uh, the recovery of our elective and routine services. So it is very, very busy uh, indeed. We, we work very closely with the Department of Health and Social Care uh, around the judgment of how the NHS is doing and we will continue to do that as we go into winter. But I think the really critical thing is that the public can help us here. The public can absolutely help the NHS here. And as the Secretary of State has said, there are things that the public can do that will take the pressure off the NHS. So the first is to remember that for face masks, there is guidance in place. If you are in a crowded environment, a higher risk environment on the tube, you know, a building, cramped building with, with low ventilation, then wear that face mask. It makes a difference, it really does. And the second thing, of course, is the vaccine programme, because the vaccine programme is our best protection against COVID. And therefore, uh, if you've been invited for a booster and you haven't had one, or if you are getting your invitation in the next few weeks, then get that booster as quickly as possible, because we know that the immunity that we get from vaccines will drop off over time. And we don't want that to occur going into winter. So it's a slightly odd press conference. You had Sajid Javid there saying that the, there are not unsustainable pressures on the NHS. Then Stephen Powers listing what sounded like a lot of unsustainable pressures on the NHS. And then a call for people to continue wearing masks. I, I, I don't know why they keep to say, oh, we'll leave it up to you. We'll, it'll be personal responsibility whether you wear a mask on public transport, etc., etc." I think everyone understands this, that people wear masks when other people wear masks. We're all social beings, we're all kind of sheep when it comes to things like this. I say this about myself as well. I am totally led by what other people in the room are doing, by what other people in the building I'm in are, are doing. When it comes to buses, because it is, you know, it's legislated, even if no one else on the bus or the train is wearing one, I'll wear one because that is like we're very specifically a rule. But where it's recommendations in my corner shop, the people in there don't wear masks, so I'm less likely to go in there with a mask. If you just, you know, it's such a low cost thing to just say, now, look, 
there is pressure on the NHS. Let's introduce some of these uh, measures which have really few costs, masks in indoor spaces, encouraging people to work from home instead of traipsing into the office. This stuff would be virtually cost-free and the government is still refusing to do it because they want to wait until the NHS is you know, completely on its knees, not just kind of on its knees. Dahlia, what do you make of the current state of debate on COVID-19? Lots of people saying, are we going to have a new lockdown? I'm pretty sure we won't. But it does seem like some further restrictions seem a bit inevitable at this point in time. Things just aren't, they aren't over yet. And, and we know this. We are having 200, around 200 deaths a day. That might even, you know, there is suggest, early suggestions that the booster vaccine program is not going to be as effective as the as the, uh, the the original vaccine program, not because the booster itself isn't effective, but for whatever reason, the uptake so far has just not been as high. And as the the, the efficacy of these vaccines wane, uh, we you know that is going to present a problem. And yet we're repeating the exact same mistakes. And and one of those is taking NHFs. NHS staff for granted and seeing them essentially as the sacrificial lambs of the economy, of seeing their their mental health, their their physical health as being, you know, things that we just sacrifice in order to keep this mirage of back as normal, you know, back to normal going. And, you know, I say this all the time when we talk about the NHS being overwhelmed or the NHS being in an unsustainable condition, we don't mean one day you're going to wake up and you know what was once an nhs building is just going to be rubble on the floor that's not what it that's not what we mean what we mean is that staff are so overwhelmed and under resourced that they aren't able to provide the levels of care that you would expect in you know a modern healthcare system uh, and that is the message that we are getting, for example, from, you know, the chief executive of the NHS Confederation. It's that we are on the precipice of being back where we were in that that peak condition of the of the pandemic, where, you know, I, I always go back to it because I think it was such a kind of powerful interview. But that interview we did, I think it was last year with Silas Webb, where he talked about, you know, he's an A&E doctor and he talked about the trauma and the moral injury of being a, you know, a, a staff member of being a health worker on an overwhelmed COVID ward. And the fact that, you know, we're sort of playing this game again, and we're talking about, you know, not really putting in something so simple as mask mandates, which I don't know anyone who's been on a bus or a tube or a train recently will tell you that the mask mandate on TfL is basically not being adhered to because the message is not coming from the government. The message is not coming from the top. It's coming from the mayor. But that clearly is not enough to actually get people to take that advice. And so we are looking down the barrel in Christmas with a combination of flu season, uh, waning vaccines and the fact that people really have received this message from the government that the pandemic is over, that we can go back to normal. We've announced Freedom Day. And so once again, we are putting those incredible NHS staff members on the brink physically and mentally. And it's absolutely shocking that the government, after, you know, clapping for carers and after all of, you know, this lip service about understanding the value of NHS workers, that they would turn around and and do that again. And when when the winter plan was was first announced, you know, from the beginning, I've always said that the idea of scrapping the mask mandate, of scrapping masks in indoor spaces, is absolutely ludicrous. And you know, in Sajid Javid's uh, com uh, press conference today, he again indulged this absurd notion that masks are somehow a violation to personal freedom. It's actually the exact opposite. It's masks that prevent us from having to go into very restrictive lockdowns that actually are quite worrying uh, violations of freedom that actually do restrict our freedom and do create, you know, mental and physical health consequences later down the line. It's that low risk, you know, low kind of low hanging fruit that this government is repeatedly refusing to adhere to, not because it's not doesn't make sense or because it's not the logical thing to do, but because instead of being sage medical advice, which is what masks are, mask wearing and we working from home is, it's been mired into a nonsensical culture war, which is so irresponsible for a government to do in the midst of a health pandemic. But 
culture wars is the, t- is the terrain that this government likes to play because it's the one that it wins most effectively on. And it's just scary to think about how many lives are actually going to be impacted uh, by by this sort of misuse of of power. It was also, I suppose, notable in that press conference that what we were constantly told is basically we're leaving this down to individual responsibility. But we're very clear if you are in an indoor space with with lots of people and wearing a mask is you know a practical thing to do. Obviously, you, you can't really do that in a bar or, or a nightclub. That's why I'd be in favor of, of vaccine passports. But that's another issue. If you're in a, a crowded place where you can wear a mask, you should do so. Well, if you watched PMQs today, what you would have noticed is that all the Labour MPs were wearing masks. None of the Conservative ones were. One more thing I do want to mention is that Sajid Javid, I think very disingenuously, sort of suggested, oh, that the NHS is going to be fine because we bunged it an extra three billion or whatever, however much we we bunged it this winter. And and why that doesn't stack up is because the reason the NHS is at breaking point is is staffing, right? We have underfunded the NHS for 10 years, huge shortage of nurses, and you can't bung them 3 billion quid and suddenly they employ loads more nurses to get us through this very, very difficult winter. We know why it's difficult. Flu, COVID, and then also the backlog of um, operations and the backlog of people who haven't appeared at at hospitals over the past 18 months because of COVID. It's going to be a very difficult winter. And the reason it's going to be almost you know, impossible to get through if we treat everything as if we are in a normal situation is that we have been running the NHS at capacity for a decade They're called efficiency savings. If there is ever a free bed in a hospital, that means something's going wrong. That's, that's a bed we shouldn't have. We need to sell that bed. We need to reduce that space, get some extra money from real estate by, by selling off part of the hospital to develop a new block of flats. That has been the attitude of the government over the past 10 years. Any, any, any extra capacity is actually a failure. And now when we have a global emergency, they think, oh, we'll give them a few extra billion pounds and they'll get through it. That's not how it works. And that is why we are in, I think, a pretty dangerous situation. That's why you are hearing the people at the top of the NHS saying we absolutely need the government to take this more seriously. The government, especially Sajid Javid, just saying, no, no, it's fine. Um, We we don't think anything is going particularly um, wrong. It doesn't stack up to me. And I think, presumably, we will enter plan B in a couple of weeks or so. I mean, hopefully the booster shots will 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 speed up, as will the vaccinations for the teenagers. Fingers crossed. 